houses. Now, therefore, I, Carrie Needfelt Thomas, Mayor of the City of New Brighton, Minnesota, do hereby proclaim Sunday, October 9, 2022, Pledger's Day. Thank you all. Thank you, my Mayor. That's a big deal. And you guys have earned it. So long, long overdue. At least two years overdue, right? So anyway, uh, we're glad you're all here. And uh, I think uh, Joyce is going to do a slide presentation, which I think you'll find very interesting. In fact, as, as part of the Historical Society, she's got over 5,000 photos in her database. And so she found quite a few from the Butcher's family going way back. And they're pretty interesting. I, after that, I think we're going to have some of the Butcher's family members say a few words. And then after that, we're going to have a celebration. So anyway, enjoy it. And Joyce, uh, you're on. And thank you. Actually, the majority of these slides are from Laura. And I thank her for that. It is truly an honor to be part of this celebration. My husband Lenny worked at Fletcher's in high school. And he always said he never would have known his way around the Twin Cities if he didn't deliver flowers. <laughs> And his half-brother, Chuck Perry, worked there as well. And anybody that I talked to in my family used Pletcher's for the weddings, celebrations. So we truly honor you today for all you've done. So, the founder of Pletcher's Greenhouses was John E. Pletcher, who was born in 1895. And we see John in this charming picture as a child with his pet dog. Here are John and Clara in 1917. The family homestead in 1920. John, John sold garden and vegetables, plants and vegetables, plants and vegetables. I guess that doesn't make sense, does it? Here's John and Clara. Clara had four children. Above there is Grandma Rosie, Fletcher, Marion, John N., Glenn, Bob in 1930. The top picture and on the left is John N., Glenn, Bob. The back row is Marion. John, Clara, Marion, and the three sons. Don't you just love these vintage photos? I mean, <laughs> They're just wonderful. John and Clara Nolan was her main name on their 25th anniversary in about 1942. Here's the Pletcher children. How charming. We just love those pictures. Okay, so the Pletcher children attended Lake Johanna School. We know that Bob is in row six on the left and John is in row seven on the right. But we don't know where Marion and Glenn are. They're part of that probably. Wouldn't they be all at school at the same time? So after Clara passed away, John married second wife Gladys Wagenstein. We all love Gladys. My personal story of Gladys is when we did a quilt for the New Brighton Historical Society back in the 1980s. Everybody did a square, and at one of our meetings, we asked for help. Who could help us bind it? So she said, I can, I can. So I took it over to, to their house, and I'm sure she laughed at the ineptitude of me sewing something, but she was such a sport. I will never forget how wonderful. And we got a red ribbon at the Ramsey County Fair, and it was only because of Gladys. I know that. John passed away in, well, I lost it a little bit. Can you see it there? 1982, Gladys, or 19... Okay, Gladys in 1985. His three sons and families carried on in the business. I did this on an apple, which meant I had to convert it to PowerPoint. I am a Mac user from the very beginning, so PowerPoint looks a little different than this. This was written by Lori, and I'm not going to put you on the spot, but would you like to read it? <laughs> when I was young, while carrying pots, 
I watched your strong, well-tanned hands tenderly plant a seedling in rich soil. To me, it grew because you watered it. It was not until I grew older that I realized it was your wisdom, knowledge, and daily nurturing that gave the plant its beauty. Today, as I look into your eyes and watch you stroll through the greenhouse, I understand the love you have for that tiny seedling and the hope it will become a lovely creation. Thank you. That, that was probably difficult to do. I admire you. Okay, here's some old photos. Bob Fletcher in 1939 at 17 years of age while planting a thousand spruce, pine, and cedar trees. And then home on leave. So they served in the military. Here's Bob Fletcher in World War II, left January 12, 1943, right May 2nd, 1943. John M. and Robert in 1943-44 with dad, John E. in the center. John's three sons, John, Robert, and Glenn, joined him in the business in 1946 when they returned home from World War II. They expanded the greenhouses and added the retail flora shop. Here's Bob Fletcher working at the greenhouse post-World War II. And here's building a new greenhouse. And again. And again. And again. Here's more building, but this one is charming because the Pletcher's delivery truck is on the left. Can you see it there? Building a greenhouse in 1947 to 1948. Pictures of John of Pletcher among the all the plantings that we're so familiar with seeing when we would go there. Another charming picture. Here's the Fletcher dads and their sons at the Arcana Lodge in 1962. In the back row was John M., Bob, John E., and Glenn. In the front row, Brian, Tim, Dan, Dave, Steve, Kent, Mark. Raise your hand if you're one of this group. Here's the Pletcher family sons with their spouses, John and Jeannie, Raymond Poliad and Marion, Bob and Lorraine, and Glenn and Joe, about 1983. Now we'll talk a little bit about the family tree. The children of John E. and Clara Pletcher. Here's daughter Marion Pletcher. Now we don't have pictures of her, but we have them of Ray. Ray was very active in the New Brighton Lions. And here is shown at a squash show. In the next picture, there's Ray with Glenn Fletcher at the New Brighton Lions event. How many years did those guys help put on the New Brighton squash show? Many, many, I'm sure. So here's some John in. And if you look, Lori has provided a family tree for the entire John N. family. Raise your hand if you're part of this group. Isn't that wonderful that she provided it? And the new pictures, when I, when I first did this two years ago, and it was in the middle of COVID, and we knew it was going to be very difficult to do. Since then, we've added 10 fifth generation babies. <laughs> and this one of Sully, Michaela, and Ruby was a new picture here. Here's one of our favorites too. Here's John M. with Bethany at prom in 1999. The photo was lovingly called Beauty and the Beast <laughs> by family members. And here's John M. with his great grandchildren, Sydney and Sam Walker, Sully, Michaela, and Ruby. That's a charming picture as well. Second one, Robert Fletcher. Here are, here's his family tree. Here's Bob with grandson, Nolan Johnson. 
Raise your hand if you're part of Robert Fletcher's family. Well, that's just wonderful. <laughs> Here's Lori, Beth, Kent, and Steve, Bob's children with John's pony, Billy. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yes. And here's Bob with his grandson, Matt. It seems like so many of the pictures that Lori shared with us have grandkids in it. And charming, charming. Here's Bob with grandson, Matt. And Bob was still playing football in 2000 at age 78. And here's a new picture that, we, that shared Bob's great-grandchildren, Simon, Leon, and Zeke in the pansies at the greenhouse. I love the in the pansy story because they shared so many pictures of the babies in the pansies. We all know where the pansies are, right in the front of, of the store, and we never thought or ever saw grandchildren in there, but Lori proved that they indeed were in the pansies. And here's Glenn, Glenn's family tree. If you're part of this family, please raise your hand. There they are. Here's John E. Pletcher with his great-grandchildren, Ruth and Anna Pletcher and David's children, the son of Glenn. And Glenn with the grandchildren, Rosina, Emily, and Jacob, Brian's children, waiting for the bus about 1997. And here's Glenn Petcher and his family at the Glen Gunflint Trail family reunion. How many went to that? Okay. And here's Glenn with Spencer and Murphy. And Emily, John Gavin, and Otto. What I remember most, Glenn, of, of this story is Every year when we would have our over 80s dinner, I would just send a letter to Glenn, Glenn saying, would you provide centerpiece flowers? And every year you did. And we would then give them away to those individuals who were over 80 years old that we were honoring that day. And we could always rely on Pletcher's to provide flowers for our event. Here's the was the Pletcher home on Old Highway 8. And here's the first day of school for Pletcher's greenhouse, for Pletcher's grandkids. Note that the retail shop across the street had not been built yet in the late 1950s. Can you see it in the background there? And a beautiful aerial view of the greenhouses. Here's Gladys, John, and Bob at holiday time. We all remember those beautiful poinsettias. And this photo is the Pletcher picnic celebrating their Swiss heritage with Gladys and John in the center in the middle row. There's John E. in the lily crop and Glenn Pletcher at holiday time. Bob and his brothers continued the business that their father began. Here's Glenn designing funeral wreaths and Bob and his open house pants. You all remember the open house pants? I'm sure we all remember when we went to those open houses. Here's a few pictures of the, of the greenhouses and how lovely they were at holiday seasons and planting time or whatever. Fletcher's greenhouses held an open house each spring, so here are some bedding plants at their 2000 open house. This charming picture was 2010. Left to right, Brian, Glenn, Bob, Lori, Robin, Walker, and John. Today's Fletcher's greenhouses has 15 greenhouses with an approximate total of 45,000 square feet. They grow a variety of seasonal, blooming plants, flowers, and garden plants for the retail and wholesale industry. There's the 1982 open house. And sometimes snow was still on the ground for the open house. 
Everyone driving by Pletcher's always waited for their pansies to bloom. This was a true sign, true harbinger of spring. Another snowy open house, but that didn't stop our hardy North Minnesotans from visiting Pletcher's because that was, we just knew we were getting rid of this awful winter, but when we drive by and see the pansies blooming, we, we knew we could make it. We could make winter in Minnesota. Pletcher's Greenhouse has celebrated 75 years in 1995. Minnesotans were anxious for spring and a visit to Pletcher's Greenhouses. And here's some of their open houses. Now, Beth, is this the one that you're in? Is it? Okay. Here's the 2019 open house with grandkids and great-grandkids. Mark with me, Kayla, Heidi, Simon, Rob, Hudson. And in the winter, it's where we go for their beautiful poinsettias. Brian Pletcher, the third generation owner, pictured here. Bob Pletcher at the holidays. And one of my favorite photos, John, Bob, and Glenn in 1984. And here they are a bit later as well. Here's Glenn with granddaughter Abby, Dan's daughter. And there's Bob and John together. Now, we all remember is that Fletcher's has always been a part of New Brighton Stockyard Days Parade. And here we see Sam, Brett, Ruth, and Anna, and Bethany Walker, great-grandchildren of John and Clara, at the 1987 Stockyard Days Parade. And that was a pretty eventful year because that's the year that New Brighton celebrated its centennial. Four pictures of stockyard days. And more pictures. Here's great grandchildren who were always a part of the parades with their parents walking the parade route, handing out flowers to parade walkers. Shown here are Ben and Bethany, Anna and Ruth. Stockyard days in the mid 1990s. And I love the carriage. We don't have a date on the one with John and Glenn on it. And Brian, here you are at the Stockyard Days Parade in 2018, and there's the family members handing out roses to parade watchers. A few years I did the narration for cable TV for it, and they would always leave like a half dozen at the station there for me as they walked by the parade, in the parade. Here's the participants at Stockyard Days. Pletcher's Greenhouse's employees. We have a few pictures of you too. Teresa Ferrara, Kathy Levingwell, Shelley Evanson. Employees at Pletcher's were often family members. Here's Rhonda. Here's Brian with Mary Ruth, wife of David. And Rhonda again, don't you love that picture of her? She's so cute. Here's Brian with his grandson, Otto Gavin Fletcher, a fifth generation Fletcher. And here's Brian with first cousin once removed, Nolan Johnson. Here's Brian Fletcher family in 2019 celebrating the holidays. And here's Lori. And here's Robin, Lori, Ben, Bob and John down back. Down back is exactly what Lori said it was. So that would be the back of the place where they congregated, I imagine. And here's Glenn, still planting in 2020. <laughs> well, my favorite slides are the babies and the pansies. Here's the great grandchildren playing in the pansies in front of Lecter's greenhouses. Look how charming. <laughs> and everybody knew that these grandchildren and great-grandchildren were just a strong part of that business, weren't they? Here's the Pletcher's fourth generation in 1994, the great-grandchildren of John and Clara. <laughs> and here's 
Sam and Emily and Matt. And Matt and Ryan and Jake and Matt and Emily. Thank heavens Lori identified all of these kids. Here's Amy, Bob with Matt, and again Bob with Matt. Nolan, Matt, sons of Lori, Emily, Jake, and Rosie, and then Emily, Jake, and Rosie, Brian's kids with Lily. The dogs played a big part of their families too. Here's Matt, Sam, and Jake, great-grandsons. And pictures of just how beautiful the greenhouses were all summer long. Just stunning flowers. So we end this portion of the celebration of Pletcher's Greenhouse's 102nd anniversary. And I'm going to give Lori this uh, USB drive. And on it, it has this slideshow. It has the invitations to the mayor and the city council. And it has the 150 photos that I scanned for that you can share with all of the Pletcher family. So we give thanks to the Pletcher family. Certainly thanks to Lori who checked the slideshow for accuracy. There may be some, but you got the idea anyway, right? With the help of family members and 150 photos of the Fletcher family. Thanks to Brian, who's going to share a little bit with us. And thanks to the entire Fletcher family for joining us today. Please stand so we can recognize you. Brian's gonna come over and uh, First of all, I want to thank everybody for coming, and especially for Joyce and everybody else at the Historical Society. I think we owe them a huge round of applause. I'm supposed to give you a two-second synopsis of, of what we grow. Five seconds. Uh, right now, I'll start with, as we are right now. We have poinsettias in the greenhouse now. We have about 5,000, which is really small. Fletcher's greenhouse back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s was the average size greenhouse. Now if you're not probably 20 acres, you're just not in business. We happen to stay in business because we do most of the work ourselves. And that's the only reason we can stay in, in, in business at this point in time. Um, so we have poinsettias, and they came in in May. The first ones, we take cuttings, get 5,000 cuttings, we root them. They start turning color when the days get long, uh, shorter, they automatically start blooming. And in Minnesota, that just happens to be perfect. We don't have to shade them or anything else. Down south, they have to shade them. In about two weeks, we'll be getting Easter lily bulbs in. And we'll plant them. They get two weeks of warm to get the roots growing. Then they get six weeks of cold. The cold is what sets the bug. You won't have an Easter lily bloom if it doesn't have cold. They happen to come out about Christmas time, which is about six weeks. And then, depending on Easter, because Easter changes every year, and I won't tell you what Bob and John said about that, but <laughs> they were never happy about that. Uh, and so it's, it's all heat related at that point. The stock geraniums just came in a week ago, and so we'll start taking cuttings for geraniums for next year. They'll start seeding here in December, and from December on, it's just full blast for bedding plant season. And we make it or lose it in spring. Uh, our spring is what gets us through the year. And so we have built, when we say we have 40,000, 5,000 or so square feet, excuse me, about half of that is grown year round. But then come February, we keep opening up more greenhouses. It's awfully hard to heat a greenhouse in Minnesota. You, you don't have insulation. When they first started, they were all glass greenhouses. And in about 1975, we started going to soft poly greenhouses. Cheaper, you didn't have to fix glass. 
Um, you can ask my cousins, Steve, fixing glass in the winter time or when it's cold. It's it's uh, yeah, it's not fun. We all and have scars. We all have scars, <laughs> and it, they were all just wooden uh, cross beams, and and you would go on them, and you walk on the two inches going up. We have these cross beam bit ladders that we would climb up on. Then now a lot of our houses are polycarbonate, which is a hard acrylic plastic. There again, it gives us a little bit more insulation than glass, but it's still very, very difficult to heat. As small as we are, our fuel bills are fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a month in the winter time. So you can see why it's expensive for us to grow. So that's the progression. It's from Christmas to Easter to spring. Um, fall, we do have mumps and everything else. Uh, I do want to then recognize the second generation that is here. First, the one that's passed away 12 years ago, Bob, Robert, um, passed away 12 years ago. His oldest brother, John, raise your hand, Uncle John, so everybody knows. He's 101. There's John, 101 years old. And then my father over there is 96 years old. And raise your hand, Dad. But then there was 13 of us in the third generation. And we were the cheap labor. <laughs> um, and that's what we were. <laughs> of course, I think the fourth generation probably said they're, they're cheap generation too, you know, help too. So. Um, and, and I do want to recognize them. Um, first in, in John's family, Mark is here, and Robin is here. Raise your arms so that they know. And then in Bob's, it's Lori, Steve, and Beth. Their brother Kent passed away five, six, ten? Sorry, this goes really fast, ten years ago. And then in my family, I think it's just me here. Um, so, me. <laughs> But then in the fourth generation, I'm not going to just call the, all the names, but can you just stand, please, the fourth generation, everybody? Stand up. So, And to be honest, most of these fourth generation came and helped uh, and worked and did things for us and continued. Uh, the three brothers were the second generation that took over. Then the third generation... Beth Stan and Lori Stan and then I was a, or Robin, excuse me, Robin, Robin Stan. So we were the third generation that were, were owning it. Now it's the fourth generation's turn, and that's Sam, Stand Up, and Jake. And they're, they're the ones running it now. We do have fifth generation that are working already. Um, I think that's because of my brother David having grandchildren that are quite old. Um, but you never know that those, that'll continue. Um, so that's, that's it. Uh, and then we have some employees here. Jody Rude, that like you, worked. There's Rhonda. Um, Milk Magnuson, raise your hand. He worked for us for like 50 some years. Oh, 